his life.
How about now? Can't hear anything. Can't hear anything? Better. Yeah, I trying to... So, okay. <laughs> okay, now I increase the gain a bit. Okay, should be okay now. Okay, let me make a check. Okay. Can. Soft. Yeah. No echo now. Okay. I think I already so lower now all the possible volume. So should be okay. I increase again a little bit. I increase again. So I think everyone should be okay. Then, okay, let's just start. So this is where we stop uh, on Monday. Just highlight you, there's a small mistake. The last part should be the log m plus one. Yeah, in the previous one should be also the same thing. A. Yeah, a, 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 a. Okay, I forgot the animation. Okay, so this part also there's a small plus one. Anyway, no different. In the end, all this thing is too small. So we have to, yeah, it will be go to zero, go to zero or less than one. So in the end, this is a big theta log n. This is about the average uh, case complexity for binary search. So yeah, binary search is using the divide and conquer strategy. Okay, sequential search is linear. Binary search is the big theta log n. So if you want to further improve your searching algorithm, yeah, that's the next step. It should be constant times. How to make your searching is in constant times. Recall the first lecture. We have, uh, yeah, we do we do the uh, sinusoidal function. There's one way. I make a table. Then I store all the possible answer, all the possible uh, corresponding degree. The sign also degree, then there's a lookup table, then you search the corresponding uh, sign theta yeah, from the table. So that is one way you can achieve your searching time in constant times. Yeah, your complexity can be constant times. To do that, in short, yeah, here there's a hashing approach to do this. So in today's lecture, we will cover this last topic of searching algorithm. Yeah, next week, Dr. Kerr will take over. She will cover the sorting and graph traversal. And then after that, in week 12, yeah, I will come back again to cover the uh, computability theory, which is what you always heard about MP hard. Yeah, MP problem, MP hard, and so on and so forth. We will introduce some this kind of problem, okay? In the end, today you will cover the concept of hashing, the hash function, and different hashing function. And yeah, so once very straight way is like direct address table, like what you see in the first lecture, the sign also uh, table. So let's say I have a set of uh, key is from zero to n minus one. All the key are distinct. Then I trying to store them into an array. So you create such a big array. And then yeah, any yeah, the data will come with a key. So for example, in this example you see on the right hand sides. Yeah. I only have actual key only three, five, six, eight, and nine. Each key carry a data. And then I will just simply store the data in the corresponding key index. So if it's three, then you will store in the location three, index three. Start from zero, zero, one, two, no data. Three got data, we store this. Then five, we have data, we store this. Uh, the data at five. Then the corresponding data will store in six. The corresponding data will store in eight and nine. Yep, then the rest will be unused. 
Yeah. So this is so-called direct address table. Not surprising, you can see this one. Good thing, positive side is like the time complexity is constant times, O1. Yeah, but what happens if the range of my key is very large? In practice, you can have a, yeah, your, day, your range can be 64 bit. So you convert the given key to. No, this one I didn't convert anything. I don't convert anything. Just, yeah, your key is one, I just store in the index one. Your key is two, I store in index two. So, all the universal, so overall, the whole range, the possible range will be very huge. Yeah, if you have a 64 bit computer, that means the data can be from zero to 18.45 times 10 power to 18. Yeah, so that means your array need to be such a big array. Yeah, then, but you only use very small portion to store the data. Because not all the key is in use. Most of the times, they are not in use. But you still create the array to, to reserve the slot for them. Then that is where your space complex... Yeah, that means your space complexity, you can expect, is very huge. But your time complexity is fast because... You just give me the key, instantly I can go, go to that index and retrieve the data. Yeah, so soon people think that yeah, this is not the smart way. They need to reduce the space complexity as well. So they start introduce the hash function. Instead of just simply this kind directly mapping, they're trying to through the hash function to narrow now the search space. Yeah, to narrow now the search space and then, then to reduce the array size so that this array only can, yeah, just need to store this amount of actual key. Yeah, maybe 39, we just through the hash function store this into index 3. Then this one store in index 4. And, but you will encounter a problem. Certain circum system, for example, in this scenario, 2 and 23 may try to store into the same location because you're trying to reduce your search the, the, the space definitely there are certain circum system certain key have the same output Af yeah, after you apply the hash function they give you the same location yeah then that will cause the collision let's say if I insert 2 first then followed by 23. When I try to insert the 23, the collision occur because the this location, the index one, this location, this slot, this slot is already occupied by two. So when you're trying to occupy 23, that is so-called collision. Yeah, this is previous one. You don't have this collision problem because all the key have a unique uh, slot. Even those key are you wouldn't use it they will still uh, reserve the slot for it. Yeah, you will waste a space. Now you choose the hash function to reduce your array size. Yeah, you definitely encounter this po problem because two key will allocate to the same slot. Yeah, then how do we solve this thing? Yeah, the good thing for, for doing hashing, one thing is like to reduce the key space. Yeah, because if you do use a direct address, it's too large. So we need to make it small, then we use a hashing. But collision occur. But yeah, how do we... Yeah, so... This thing already spent. So the hash key, yeah, is an array. Yeah, so the each slot, we call it hash slot. Uh, let's say we have 200... Uh, yeah, 200 entry. Then... Yeah, every key you just modulus one of the simplest approach you have to you're trying to reduce your uh, hash table the array the hash table to 200 yeah then one straight way is that you modulus by 200 so your F fk your hash function will give you whatever k you're given it definitely return a number from 0 to 199 so the you will allow yeah, that will be the corresponding index in the hash table. Yeah, of course this example is not this is not a very good 
hash function, but just for example. So you start insert the number. Yeah, you just start insert your data given the key. Then you use a key, apply the key K mode 200. Maybe you put into index 2, index 3, index 5, index 100, index 199. No matter how you insert it, it definitely wouldn't exit because this function only give you the number is 0 to 199. Yeah. Later, we will, you will see why it is not a good function. I will explain it. Yeah, but in certain circumstances, you definitely encounter, for example, you try insert uh, 2 and 202. Yeah, 2 and 202. If you, let's say I insert 2 first, then followed by 202. Yeah, both of them were insert to the same location, same hash slot. In that circum system, the collision occur. Yeah, so so this thing, yeah, one is the you need to have a good hash function. Another issue is hash table. You need to have a you need to no matter how you how you smart you design a very smart good hash function you definitely there's a one day you will encounter the collision so you need to consider the collision yeah so a hash function must return a value that within the hash range cannot exit the hash range otherwise you are out of the range and yeah, we need we always trying to evenly distribute the key and make sure uh, all the hash slot is fully utilized and yeah you have a chance to insert the key into that particular slot. Otherwise, it's waste the space. So and another thing, your hash function you need to make it easy and quick. So just now the modulus one is easy and quick, but you will find that it didn't fulfill the yeah, evenly distributed. You may have encountered if you notice that there's certain yeah, it's quite easy to in yeah, make the there are some clustering issue. Easy to all the keys squeeze into certain slot. Yeah, especially in the even number slot. So uh, yeah, normally if we don't know the key distribution, and um, yeah, so we were yeah, we need to even trying to yeah. If we know nothing about the incoming key distribution, evenly distribute the key range over the hash slot, well, avoid obvious opportunity of clustering. And then, if we have the knowledge of incoming distributed uh, distribution, use a distributed detect. Yeah, so we 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 can select the hash function. So the yeah the thing here is trying to set is like um if I don't know. If I have no idea about the distribution, the data distribution, then I just trying to evenly put the data. If I know the distribution, I will based on their distribution design my hash function. So a, a few a few just now there's one th this one is one. Try to use a modulus is very typical uh, hash function. Yeah, just like this one, we're trying to modulus sixteen. If this thing, yeah, you find that, that means you if you do this thing, x modulus by sixteen, actually you only depend on the last four bit of x, yeah. So that means, if in front is what is the number, it doesn't matter. You always will allocate to the same location. Then collision will always occur. You will you will let this data all squeeze into certain location. And another typical issue we should try to avoid is select the power of 10 for decimal number as key. Because all this is because of the real data. In our daily life, the data are not really random. For example, your yeah, build, your building number, your IC number, actually they're not really random. S uh, normally, one and two and three because all the numbers start from one two three like your the street number the uh, postcode 
the block number and so so forth. Yeah, this data always start from one, two, three, four. So you find that the frequency one and two and three occur is more frequent than uh, six or seven or eight or nine because they are the number is given in sequence. So always one and two and three have higher frequency than seven and eight and nine. So yeah, these are the things. And now you find that if you select some prime your your table size, if you select as a prime number, that's when you modular some prime number, and that prime number not too close to power of two, yeah, it's good to store the those real data in practice. Yeah, that is explain why just now the two hundred is not. It means not good. It means that if you are using the real data. If today you are talking about a random data, a totally random data, yeah, that means you have no idea how this thing, uh, the the distribution or the distribution are yeah, just randomly, this yeah is evenly distributed. Then you use any modulation, it's not a big issue. But in real world, the real data, yeah, their distribution have some pattern. Actually, there are some pattern. They are not really random. Not everything. In all the number you have, all the re real data you have are really uh, evenly distributed. They are not really e evenly distributed. In that circum system, you find that your table size you select prime number, and that prime number not too close to exact power of two is better option. Yeah. Another way you can use, yeah, you can try to break the number into several part and then trying to do some multiplication addition yeah just like this example they're trying to square the key and then take the middle bit r bit and then you do it as a hash table yeah there's a lot of combination you can can that's mean you compare to the previous one you just want to fully utilize every single bit in the data yeah in the key to uh, for you to build your hash key table, yeah. Instead of just like this one is only depend on the last four bit, yeah. Then similar play, then similar number. That means you always take the last few digit to as your to build your hash table, yeah. This one they will fully utilize all the digit in your key. Yeah, this is case by case. Another way. Uh, yeah, this is using the key algorithm. Another one is uh, using the pseudo, uh, pseudo number generator to randomly generate the location, the, the hash slot for you to insert the data. So called pseudo random number means that they are not really the real random. Uh. So they still have some pattern. Yeah. So this way is typical pseudo random number. That's in your, your multiple, your A is your table size is let's say 200 or whatever number then you divide by some prime number 23 take the floor then multiple by 8 plus 5 don't ask me why this number yeah there's a, just an example only then your a just then your a multiple by k then modulus by the table size yeah for example i my hash my table size is 31 then my a will be uh, 13 so let's say a number i k i trying to insert k from 1 to 15 1 2 3 4 5 6 to 15 yeah you find that 1 was insert into 13 2 were insert to 26 3 were insert to 8 21 3 16 yeah it's look like random so yeah this is another way you can use to build out your hash table yeah so these are the few possible hash function but i think in practice there are a lot of hash table you can use but the one key thing is the table size your hash table your, your hash function must only can generate the yeah up to the table size that's when if your table size is h that's when your hash function only can generate the number from 0 to h minus 1 based on the index uh. 
start from zero to h minus one if your table size is h yeah and you need to make sure that every h slot is have a chance to insert some data and you trying to not let uh, the clustering clustering effect happen that's mean not all the data was squeezed into certain hash slot yeah then the other hash slot have seldom use it yeah so still you need to reserve memory and def define space before setting the hash function yeah you of course you need to reserve the memory space but do doing building the hash table is compared to the earlier the direct address table this one definitely use lesser memory and space and you will find that the complexity the time complexity you you reduce the space complex complexity but your time complexity more or less is remain unchanged yeah so this is the hash function we introduce a few but no matter how good the hash function you select you will find that it's still possible that the collision still occur you cannot avoid the collision yeah so here we introduce two type of a uh, uh, two type of a uh, method to avoid the collision to handling how, how we handle the collision one is the closed address hashing the other one is open address hashing closed address hashing means that uh, the address is fixed so once you, wait maybe I show the things first yeah so once you yeah once there's a not surprising if you there's a collision when when you calculate the key and they provide you that this hash slot is the play for you to put the key and the data when you go to visit this particular hash slot you find that this hash slot is already occupied by some number then what is the solution very easy instead yeah you just create a link list to store two number together yeah so that is closed address hashing the idea behind so if the if the hash function is the same size as a table will it be the same as direct no the tables the table size will be reduced right that's why the, the search space will the purpose for hash function we we are trying to reduce the, the space the key the, the key space that's mean your key if, remember just now earlier we said that the possible key can be uh, let's say it's a 64 bit that's mean your key can be 64 bit data 64 bit key 64 bit key means that it's 10 power to 18 yeah of course not surprising you cannot create such a big hash table in practice so but at the same time you find that most of the times most of the key you won't use it yeah then in that scenario we trying to reduce the 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 size of the array to store the data we can reduce to the hash table we reduce to 200 or 300 yeah some reasonable appropriate number then we need to design a hash function for you to do the mapping to map the each key to the corresponding hash slot yeah so good hash function we're trying to let all the key evenly distributed to each slot but no matter how good it is definitely there's a collision happen because you the possible key always more than the hash table size then in that scenario collision occur how are you going to solve this collision problem so here one way now i'm introduce you is the closed address hashing closed address i mean you still go to the same address same hash slot but this each hash slot instead of store one data they are store a link list so you got two data you just store two data two key two data then you store together through the link list then that's called change hashing 
So initially all the slots are empty. Then all the element with the hash address. So this hash address is closed. So you always go to the same hash address. You don't need to change the address. Although there's a collision because they just insert at the back. Yeah. Of the link list. So then that will come out a uh, things called load factor. If you have n record n key to insert, but you, your table site is H, so the log factor is N over H. So N over H trying to uh, give you the idea how is the log. That's when each slot got how many uh, data is stored. So if you have, if your N is 10, for example, if my N is 10, yeah, my table, my hash table is five. Not surprising. You have, on average, each slot have two data, right? Because the log factor is equal to two. Yeah, that's when you have a hash table. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So each slot, you need to store ten data. You need to store 10 data. So that means on average, maybe here I have 3. I store 3 as a link list. Huh? Yeah, as a link list. Then maybe here I store 2. This one I store 3. The rest I store 1. One, two, three, four, five. So, three. yeah, so total there are 10 data. On average, each slot is uh, store two data on average. So, log factor is trying to tell you on average how many data in each slot. Yeah, so that's the log factor. So in the closed address hashing, there will be n over h number of element in each link list on average. Doesn't mean all the way through. Uh. Sometimes you can be 3, can be 4, can be 5. Yeah, this is on average. The log factor is just give you on average. Yeah, each link list is about 2. So during searching, yeah, the search element with a hash address is compared with the Link this sequential. That's when you will become a sequential search. You will go to that slot, then you will apply the sequential search to search each item. Same thing. This is the hash. So you have so implied your hash table will create hash link list. Then each link list will store n key. Yeah, so m key. So or total is n. Yeah. So so now. What is the worst case for this thing? The worst case behavior is like, yeah, everything was stored into the same link list. And you, the worst, the worst case, uh, that means all, although no, no matter how big your hash table is, everything was so unlucky to squeeze into one hash slot. That is the worst case. And your search, unsuccessful search, will search all the way all the key but you still not success yeah that means this is a sequential search so the yeah unsuccessful search will take uh, n key comparison successful search also not too good on average every key can be searched but you still go through the yeah we have learned in the sequential search you know that the complexity is still linear yeah, in the worst case, for successful or, or unsuccessful. Yeah, this is linear. The other one also linear, unsuccessful or successful. So, if we assume that any given key is equal, so can we use binary? Um, because the key, when you use the binary search, the when you use the binary search, that means your data is sorted. But in just now the process, I didn't sort the data. 
every time I just simply insert and then put it at the back unless you do some some sorting when you insert the data otherwise in this example in the standard approach for hashing uh, uh, the original hashing we didn't sort the data of course you cannot use a binary search yeah so if we assume that any given item is equal likely to hash into now we're talking about the okay this is a worst case so it's big data n so now average case what is the average case for okay we analyze the unsuccessful search first on average yeah you we assume that all the key uh have equally likely to hash into any one of the hash slot an unsuccessful search on average does n over h key comparison yeah because you have h slot you have h slot you have h slot yeah h slot okay doesn't matter how big it is then inside got so many data so many key and key so on average unsuccessful search so on average you search maybe here you search maybe here on average your searching should be uh, the average slot which is n over h yeah you take so much time to do the key comparison you still cannot find the item yeah so yeah that is the average case for unsuccessful search okay so you expect that you need to take n over h comparison and find out that the thing is not inside the the the, the hash table this one i think should be okay yeah this one is more i uh, need to think about it so for successful search yeah you will find that the successful search on average it does one plus n over h comparison on average what does it means how, how to yeah how this thing work in short this thing is like you're trying to think that you got hash you have a hash table got hash slot then you got a yeah some data you got n key distributed into this hash table here and there yeah successful search the idea is like you definitely do uh, some unsuccessful search first then followed by the last one is the successful one then you find the key so they trying to think in this way is first i'm trying to yeah if the search the search uh item is the i item that means first i will do i minus one so in trying to think that you got i minus one item i minus one item is already insert into hash table and this the i item is not insert yet so this is through this search through this uh then you're trying to search the 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 i item in this scenario you won't be able to search the i item because i item is not insert yet so in this circumstance on average on average you will take uh, i sorry i minus one over h comparison yeah you take i minus one over h comparison on average to search i item and unsuccessful you can't find it then plus one more that's mean you plus this the next one is that that's mean after that i insert this i item then you can search it so that is the last com comparison and you found the i item so that is the uh, time complexity for successful search on average yeah so you you sum it up so this thing that's mean i need to sum it up from i equal to one to n yeah i think it's in the next one yeah so is so each each item the 
probability is 1 over n. Then the com number of comparison is uh, i minus 1 over h, which is unsuccessful, search that i item, plus you found the i item, plus one more comparison, you found the i item. So this is the, the uh, number of comparison for the for searching the i item. And then this is the probability you're trying to find the i item. So you just expand this thing. This thing is the sum of one. Yeah. Then this is one over n h is independent independent to i. So can take it out. So this is a arithmetic series. Yeah, you can simplify this thing. Then you find that that is the average number of comparison for successful search. Yeah. So in other word. A successful search this one is constant plus n minus one yeah so you can simplify it to n over h okay so if n okay this is the proof so if my n is proportional if my n is proportional to h actually this okay previous one also okay we have to recall huh? this one is a successful search back to just now the the unsuccessful unsuccessful is n over h is also n over h this one is 1 plus n over h so if my n is proportional to h actually this thing is still constant what does this thing means this thing means that your 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 n is proportional to h. That's mean if your n is very large, your h table size also must be very, yeah, is proportional to it. Then in that circum system, yeah, your, your, your searching time is still in constant time. Is the complexity equal to complexity of sequential search? Just that there's, um, yeah, so you'll find that in the end, this thing, is depend on this ratio so if this thing if n is proportional to h that means your 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 hash table size is some yeah is some percentage of n maybe yeah uh, if you have 100 data then you create a your hash table size is 50 then if you have 200 data then you will increase your hash table to 100 something like that is proportional then your search, you will find that your search actually is still constant time. The search is still constant time. Yeah. But if they are not, then actually it is still linear. That means your, if, your, if your table size is not proportional to your key, number of key, then the complexity actually is same as the sequential search. But if they are proportional, then it is a constant time. So where does the plus one come from? You mean here, the successful search? Because first you will do, okay, in this, in here you can see, first you will do I minus one over H unsuccessful search first. Because you found the item is after you did on average I minus one over H unsuccessful search, then you found the item plus one. Yeah, this thing you need to take some time to, to digest. The, I think the the, sus, the unsuccessful one is quite obvious. The successful one, you need to think about it. If you have a key, you if you have some hash table with a hash, then your data is here. First, you can think about it. It's like I'm trying to insert I minus one key into this hash table first. I minus one key into this hash table first then so if i'm trying to search the i item definitely i won't be able to success because no such thing at this moment so on average i need to take so much search to search i and unsuccessful so after that i'm trying to insert the i item into it so that mean after i insert it on average i need to take how many comparison 
is unsuccessful one plus one more step. Yeah, then you found the item. Then you need to consider your eye can be equal to one, your eye equal to two is the first item. Your eye is the first item. First item, of course, yeah, you just need one comparison because no, nothing, at the beginning, there's nothing inside the hash table. So this part is zero. I equal to one is zero. Then you only need one comparison. When I equal to two, yeah, is uh, one over H. You will do on average one over H unsuccessful search plus one more comparison successful and so on and so forth. So you need to sum it up then get the on average. Okay. Yeah, this one among this uh, complexity, I think this is the one you need to think about it. Okay, so this is the closed address hashing. This is one way. This means you, you store all the collision uh, key into the sampling list. And yeah, so worst case, you take n should be n over h comparison. Yeah, unsuccessful. And yeah, the worst case for this thing overall, the worst case is everything in the sampling list. Yeah, you so unlucky, everything collision, everything store into the same, then end up is a sequential search. But on average, unsuccessful search is n over h. And yeah, successful is constant time if the n is proportional to h. Yeah, same thing. Uh. Actually, actually, if n is proportional to h, your unsuccessful search also all n. Okay. So overall, it still can acceptable. It's still a constant time. Yeah. That is the purpose we want to use a hash table. Yeah. We first, we use a sequential. Sequential is uh, all n. Then after that, binary search is the log n. Then of course, hash, you want to use hashing is because it is a constant time. But building the table take times. Yeah. Building this hash table, it will take times. So another way is the open address hashing. Open address hashing is using another. Yeah, there, that means the data is not stored into the same place. If it's, there's a collision, there's open address, they will change another address. The address is open. Yeah. Yeah, it should be the same thing. It should be also, also, also all n. Uh, sorry, should be also constant time all one. So at the end of this, okay, this one, yeah, we will cover two open address. Open address is the other way. That means this slot is collision. I was trying to look for another slot. Yeah, so that means I need to do the rehashing to search another slot to which is empty for me to insert the this particular key. Okay. So the close address is trying to store everything into the same hash slot where the uh, link list. So now we're trying to use the open address hashing. Open address hashing is trying to, uh, if this slot is occupied by something already, I'm trying to rehash to look for another new slot. Yeah. So here again, we only introduce two linear probing and double hashing. There are a lot. This thing also, there are a lot, just like a hash function, there are a lot of hash function you can, yeah, you, you can think out. So, okay, the first one, linear probing, that means this lot is occupied. Yeah, that means if I have a hash table, so this hash table, there's no link list. You don't need the link list. Yeah, maybe just an array is good enough. So if something already here, yeah, something already here. Something is already here. Now I'm trying to insert something called W. Okay, I'm trying to insert to here. Yeah, after I apply the hash function, he tell me, yeah, I find that the W key will be here. Not surprising, you will call, do the collision. So if you using the close address hashing, yeah, they will create a link list. Then X will f store here, then W will store here through the link list but open address hashing is not doing this 
for example, I can use the this linear probing approach to rehash the new location. This one very simple. They just simply find the next location. Plus one. Yeah. They're trying to plus one. Let the i equal to plus one and then do the calculate the head rehash. Yeah. So this what this rehash means. In short, it just simply look for the next location. If this occup occupied, this also occupied, then they just look for the plus one and then look for the next location. Then they will put W here. Yeah. So this is what this linear probing means. I think a lot of people asking, actually you not recalculate the the uh, rehashing doesn't mean you recalculate everything. Uh. Actually, this is just like trying to after you get the hash function give you the key, if this particular hash slot is occupied, you just simply plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. Yeah, you just need to try up to, if your hash table is M, the size is M, you just need to try plus one to plus M minus one, from one to M minus one, because after that you are back to the same location. That's mean, in short, if such thing happen, that's mean this hash table is already full. No more space for you. Okay. Yeah. So maybe this example. Yeah. Example. Of course, this thing is not good. I have mentioned this is not a good hash function. Just easy for me to do the calculation. So given you this few number, one nine four two. Yeah. From one zero five five to one nine four two. Yeah. Some some number. So one zero five five. You modulus by ten. Yeah. Okay, starting definitely no collision one. So you put in the, the slot 5. Then this one put in the slot 2, slot 6. Then this one will be, ah, 1, 8, 1, 2. Yeah, there's a hash, there's a collision. Yeah, so you're trying to plus 1 to look for the next location, which is empty. So you'll insert into slot 3. Yeah, this thing okay. Then the next one, 1, 9, 4, 2 you are supposed to insert to here. Yeah, of course, it's occupied. Then plus one, then still occupied. Then this is the free. So you insert to here, 1942. Yeah. The number of key has to be smaller. No, it should be the other way. In this case, is it true that the number of key, the number of key should be, uh, no, the number of key has to be smaller than, yeah, of course, the number, yeah, if you don't have in, otherwise you don't have the slot to insert. If you, like in this example, I keep insert, eventually I only can, not surprising, I only can insert 10, 10 key only. If you have the 11 key, definitely I will run out of space. So, okay, here I in the slide I didn't cover, but normally what people doing, so they will check the log fa factor. If the log factor exits certain percentage, let's say it's more than 0 0.8, normally what they will do, they were trying to create another one, another bigger, maybe from 0 to 19, I will double the size, and then trying to reinsert this key into the new hash table first then the space will increase. Yeah, that's mean they're trying to expand the, the hash table size. Yeah, when you have more than the, you have more key need to insert, which is more than the hash slot. Yeah, so they will expand it. So, how to do the search? Yeah, that is what we're going to cover here. So they were trying to, yeah, Compute the hash code, okay, you, you give me the key, I calculate the hash code, then this hash code was trying to store somewhere here first, then my answer is blank, to search whether the thing is inside or not. So, yeah, they was trying to to start run this loop, In this loop, as long as this location is not empty, yeah, they were trying to check whether this particular key is equal to K or not. If it is, then that is the answer. Then key found. If it is not, they will apply the rehash function to, yeah, in just now the linear probing, that means they just simply plus one and then look for the next location and then look for the next location. 
yeah, until they found that this is equal to yeah the code the location is equal to the code you store earlier that's when you already back to back to the yeah you already return to the first first location yeah you really search through one round you really cannot find the key then that's when the thing is not inside okay so yeah one thing one yeah this thing of course there's few scenario of course one thing is success the other one is unsuccess when the position is empty that's when you can't find the things yeah okay so this just how the linear problem will keep in short the linear problem will be like a sequential search every time they just search the next slot next slot until they found the item whenever they encounter an empty slot that's mean yeah they, they they also will stop yeah whenever they encounter the slot is empty yeah that's mean the thing is not found yeah then they also will return that's mean the thing is cannot found because when, when you think about this scenario just now the x y z scenario x y z yeah let's say I'm, I, I haven't insert W yeah you're trying to search now I'm trying to search search uh, not insert uh. I'm trying to search W then you're trying to search W yeah it's not here then you will do the rehashing you'll go to the next location for linear problem just simply plus one yeah y is not equal to w so you carry on yeah z is not equal to w you carry on yeah and let's say this is the empty one in in this way you you already can stop because the key the w is not in the hash table yeah this is how the searching work because it cannot be empty one if hash w is inside definitely w will be here yeah, so once he's got the empty slot, that means W is not inside. They don't need to carry on to search. Yeah. So I have to quickly finish this part. But you need to take notes. Uh, I mean, you're talking about uh, searching, insert. Then another issue is, how about if I want to delete certain key from the hash table? Yeah, so in that circum system, you, you, after you remove the key, you need to note make some marker to indicate that this particular slot previously is in use like just now this thing yeah maybe my if if certain certain system this thing is already store uh, a previously then actually my w is store here then after that i some reason i delete this guy i delete this guy yeah if I didn't put any marker, yeah, my search algorithm will fail. It will stop here. Yeah, so I have to put some marker to tell the search uh, algorithm that, yeah, this one previously is in use. Just like because some reason I delete the A, yeah, so you you can skip and carry on to search. Yeah, then you found the W. So if you consider the delete key, actually, yeah, you need to introduce this kind marker to mark the, the slot is previously is in use just like because you remove the a now it is empty <coughs> for you to insert but searching you need to skip this slot okay so of course uh, searching this will be very expensive especially when your log factor close to one it's almost like a sequential search as i mentioned earlier and another drawback for linear probing is like all the data very likely to squeeze into the same location so-called clustering and causing you to always insert searching or need, always need to do a long run so another way is double hashing double hashing <coughs> yeah you still have the Lock factor. The reason is very simple. You you got hash key, you can have a n data. But definitely for the, uh open address, you your n over h definitely is less than or equal to one. Cannot be more than one. Right? 
it still got the load factor. Yeah, but, but for closed one can be more than one. For open address cannot be more than one. Impossible. Okay. So rehashing, same thing. So people trying to introduce double hashing. Double hashing actually is similar, but the increment instead of plus one, they're trying to have another hash function to control the step. Yeah, so this is maybe, yeah. For example, this is the linear problem, double hashing. Yeah, you will introduce another hash function for the hash increment for rehashing. Yeah, so I can do k mod 8 plus 1. So that means this thing will give me a number from 1 to 8. So that means my rehashing instead of increase by 1. Yeah, it will depend on the key. Some key will increase by 2, some key may increase by 3, 4 or 5, up to set, uh, up to 8. Yeah, so that will become, make the, the rehashing become a bit random. They won't move, always move, increase by one. Some some key may increase by two. Some key may increase by four. Yeah, that will improve the rehashing process compared to linear probing. Yeah. So you can see, given this key, yeah. Okay, initially they look exactly the same because there's no uh, rehash involved. So. Yeah, this thing should be insert here. This thing also insert here, no problem. This thing insert here. This thing insert here. This thing insert here. After that, at this point. Okay, yeah, one more. Yeah, yeah, there's a collision occur. So this thing will jump one, two, three, three step. Then they found this. But this one, yeah, then you will found one, two. Then how about here? If you use the double hashing, yeah, they just need to run one, two. Then you will, you, you, you will not be insert to this slot. Yeah, he will jump to somewhere else. Yeah. And this thing also will jump. Yeah, then this thing don't have a collision. Yeah, they, you can see that this one, sometimes they will jump big step. Sometimes it will jump small step. Then the it will help you to build out the hash table is more evenly distributed. But linear probing will trying to squeeze everything into the same location. Okay, so I actually I already explained why this thing need to plus one, because you if you don't do this, yeah, there's a chance you get zero. That means your hash, rehashing you won't work at all. Zero increment. That means you always stay in the same slot. Yeah. And this number should be always smaller than your hash table size. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, this thing already expand. So the, yeah. And the size of the hash table in double hashing must be prime number. Must be prime number. Yeah, you think about it. Why is it must be prime number? You notice that here must be prime number. Yeah, if it is not prime number, if your increment, for example, if it, it is an even number, yeah, for, for example, if only have four, yeah, one, two, three, four. If this is on, yeah, imagine my H is, my H, my, my, my tables, my H table is only have four slot. Four slot, then that's when your increment, if it's, if your this D is equal to 2, when you're trying to insert something, the e D is equal to 2. Then you will try this location. If this location is occupied, you will plus 2, you go to this location. Yeah, if this location is occupied, yeah, uh, this location is occupied, then you will plus 2, you will back to here. In the end, you have no chance to check this point and this point. But you find that if your hash table size is a prime number, you don't have this issue. Because the no increment is is factor, so you wouldn't have this kind of loop. Yeah, you definitely will visit every sing every slot. Yeah, so that is why your double hashing the the table size must be prime number. Okay. 
So yeah, open address hashing, no fixed address. Close address got fixed address. They use the link list. This one use the rehashing. Okay. So that is about the uh, hashing. So next Monday, Dr. Kerr will take over to cover the sorting and graph traversal. Okay, so remember the project is already start from this week and yeah, some of, some of you maybe do the lab next week. Yeah, so the grouping, so I, yeah, so I have to remind you, attendance, yeah, is it, quite important. The group, yeah, because it's a grouping. Uh. So if you absent, we will randomly allocate you. Yeah, then you don't come and complain. The group is not good to you. Yeah. So please attend the lab. Okay? Thank you. The worst case for searching for double hashing has to go through the entire table. The worst case, yeah, that means you assume that the table is already fully, yeah, it's already full. Then, yeah, that's the worst. Everything, that's a, the slot is occupied. Then you will search everything. That will end up is just like a sequential search. Although you didn't search every single element in order, you jump, 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 jump. Not saying double hashing, actually, linear probing also the same thing. Yeah. The prime number, today got two prime numbers. Uh. The earlier one is due to the real data. I guess you are talking about this one. If this number is, yeah, this is a prime number. Uh, okay, let me expand the prime number again first. Okay, this prime number one, because you find that, let's say your hash table is not prime number. It's not prime number. If your hash table is not prime number, the simple example is your hash table size is only four. Four is not prime number, right? So my hash table is four. Now let's say my, this, hash function somehow I'm trying to insert something uh, let's say this this location is occupied let's say this location is occupied this lo these two location is not occupied okay now I'm trying to insert some key some key and then I try to calculate the hash function the hash function tell me that I, I need to insert to here of course this location is already occupied I have to search the next location then I'm trying to calculate the the uh the increment the hash increment in the double hash yeah so the d will give me equal to two yeah so in that scenario i will go to the two step away from this lo location this is a rehashing rehash to here a eh? this location is also occupied then i will plus two again plus two Again, so will be one, two. I will back to the same location. Do you notice there's an issue? Actually, the first location and third location is not occupied yet, but you have no chance. You have no chance to visit. Yeah. But today, if let's say if your prime number, if your table site is prime number five, one, two, th one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Let's set this one is occupied. This one is occupied. Same thing, same same scenario. The K trying to insert to the second slot. Then after that, you plus two. Then you plus two. One, two, you will go to here. Plus two, you will go here. Plus two, you will go here. So actually, you have a chance to visit every single slot if the table is prime number if the table is not prime number forever you cannot find for f yeah you have a chance that f certain slot you forever have no chance to visit it even if it is empty okay so that is why this when you use a double hashing you need to make sure that the table size is prime number okay can you explain the prime number? I already explained it. Then why use open address instead of direct access? Because direct access need to create a very huge table. 
and then most of the slot is unused. Okay. Uh, this cast. I think you're talking about direct, direct, direct. We talk at the beginning here. Yeah, direct table. If your search space is 64 bit, you need to create such a huge table. It's 10 power to 18. Yeah, but you find that most of the time you won't use all of them. You only use a very small portion on it. Yeah. So because booth will require number of elements less than table size. Yeah. The yeah, we 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 ideally of course this thing if you can create such a huge thing, yeah, it's easy to implement, also easy for you to insert. Of course we want to do that. But it will cost us a lot of space. The space memory will be very high. Yeah. So of course we try not to do that. Yeah. So that's why we we, we introduce a hash function, trying to remap the your key to smaller range. But doing that, that means when you map such a big space to a small, there's a chance for collision. There's a chance that two key have the map to the same location. Then then collision happen. How to solve it? Yeah, then you use a closed address or open address. Either you use a link list to store multiple data in the same slot, or you use the open address. Just find another new location by rehashing. Then rehashing, today I only cover two. Linear one, just plus one. Just look for the next location, that's it. Another one, yeah, you find that find doing plus one, yeah, is, is will squeeze or will have the clustering effect will happen. So to prevent this, yeah, we try not to do that. We will use the key to, we, we introduce another hash function to decide the increment. Instead of fix the increment, double hashing, the increment is not fixed. It's not plus one. It can be plus whatever, uh, some, some another number. Yeah, depend the hash function and the key. Then another hash function and the key. So sometimes you plus two, sometimes you plus three. But this increment is fixed uh, for that particular key. Another common mistake people make is like they think that they need to keep recalculate the the increment. It's not true. It's always fixed. If you inc you find that this key need the increment is three, you just simply keep increasing by three and search and until you find the empty slot, you insert it. Okay. I hope I clarified all your doubt for today's lecture. Anyway, if you have any question, you still can send the email to me to clarify it. Okay. I would like to stop this streaming. Okay, good.